Hi everyone and welcome back to the Wild Side with Wildlife SOS. I'm Karthik Satyanarayan, co-founder and CEO of Wildlife SOS. Joining us today is a very special guest. She's a wildlife conservationist, a nature lover, a young philanthropist. She's been on the Forbes list of the most powerful women. She's also the executive director and CEO of the HCL Corporation and the vice chairperson of HCL Technologies. She also heads the corporate social responsibility of the HCL Foundation and the Habitats Trust. Mrs. Roshni Nader Malhotra. Roshni, it is such a honor to have you here with us today. Welcome to the wild side. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. How are you doing Roshni? I hope your children and family are safe and keeping well. Everyone's well. I think uh, an experience like this is also an opportunity to really reflect on uh, wants versus needs. And I think that uh, you realize that uh, as long as you have the needs, you're okay. Have you been keeping busy during this lockdown? What exactly have you been doing? Have you developed any new skills? One of the things uh, that uh, apart from, of course, you know, uh, when you're in the virtual environment, there's no concept of working hours. So I think for everyone, people are actually working and being a lot more productive than they've been otherwise, which, you know, makes you feel kind of guilty too. But that's because there's no concept of working hours. So you could be in meetings, you know, in the middle of the night, early in the morning. Uh, but I think one of the things that, um, you know, I picked up quite a bit uh, during this uh, lockdown was uh, badminton. So it's been fun. We've been playing badminton every evening. So at least uh, one is keeping uh, fit. And definitely, um, you know, I think in the last 20 years, at least Delhi hadn't had the fresh air it's had. So despite the heat, I think just to be outside is something to be really thankful about because you know this air is not going to last forever so you may as well enjoy it when it does because during the lockdown believe it or not we've had so many baby birds that have had to be rescued our team has been constantly pounded with rescue calls it's very interesting you said that because two weeks ago a juvenile kite landed in our garden and then my boys and my husband and i we had to rescue it and it was just the most phenomenal experience because even though it was a juvenile, the kite not injured, but I think it was in that stage of learning how to fly. So it kept landing back onto the garden and then it got very startled because I have four dogs. So, you know, it went into that protective position and then it just stayed there. And, you know, we were very paranoid. So we had to get the cardboard box in the water and, you know, put a towel on it and pick it up and put it into the box and all these things. And it was such a unique experience. You know, uh, we were not birders and, you know, we've never had this experience. And uh, so I, I, I think there have been a lot of silver linings and learnings. But I'm so glad the kite recovered. Yeah, you win some, you lose some. But I think that now and now we can see this uh, kite because I think th around this neighborhood is its habitat. So it's been flying around all over the place killing every pigeon in sight. We can be part, you know, part responsible to get it back to its murderous ways. I'm so glad that you and your family could witness that, Roshni. Firstly, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for your generosity and continued support to Wildlife SOS over the years. I think, Karthik, our journey of meeting began four years ago when you spoke at the Shivnada Foundation conclave and you opened up all our eyes and i think since then we've had i think some school students visit as well and we've had you know lots of discussions and reflections and it's and i and uh, you know uh, absolutely full credit to wildlife sos i think we need individuals such as you because you you also talk about not just um, animals in the wild but the interaction that they are very closely having with them having been in the urban uh, milieu so i think that uh, you know both are very important you know how your argument of wild animals belong in the wild hence wild it's been a great uh, journey understanding all the good work that wildlife sos is doing so great thank you for your kind words roshni it's very encouraging to hear that from you roshni you are an integral part of one of india's largest private philanthropic organizations the shiv nader foundation can you tell me a little bit about the foundation and your role in it? Uh, the Shivnana Foundation was founded in 1994 uh, by my father. And um, 
you know, it's a foundation which has really been uh, focused on creating um, institutions for the country and institutions which will, of course, outlive its founders and the founding families. So whether it's SSN in uh, Chennai or it's the Shibnada University, Shibnada Schools, the Vidya Gyan Leadership Academies, um, the whole idea is that, uh, you know, when you create institutions, uh, you create uh, pillars of excellence where students come and then hopefully along with learning vital uh, education skills for life, you also impart them a little bit of the value system, which is ingrained in either the founding family or the institutions that we've created. Karthik, it's, it's actually a great way for us, at least at the foundation, you know, whether it's the Vidya Gyan or Habitats Trust or ACL or the Shivnara Foundation to really, uh, in literally a click of a hand, access 13,000 students, you know, uh, 26,000 parents, uh, you know, over 2,000 faculty. And, uh, you know, uh, the aim for the Shibnada Foundation is that we can, uh, you know, create some sort of common DNA, common set of values, whether they're ingrained in, you know, value for life for humans as well as other species. It could be uh, learning of leadership skills, uh, survival, you know, entrepreneurship, whichever pillars. So I think the Shivnada Foundation plays a pretty active role in that. We've also got 17,000 alumni in the world, you know, not just in India, all over. So they're breathing examples of, uh, you know, the Shivnada Foundation uh, institutions. So that's really why Shivnada Foundation was set up. That's terrific. Vidya Gyan, meaning knowledge and wisdom, is an initiative by your foundation. Can you tell us a little bit about the mission? Vidya Gyan Leadership Academy, of which I am a chairman and founder as a trustee, two residential schools. Um, and these are targeting uh, uh, meritorious, rural, uh, underprivileged uh, children from UP and uh, basically bringing them, them into a residential school. And by the time they graduate, have them exactly at the same level as their urban counterpart. Vidya Gyan is a platform to make sure that um, you know, rural children are able to dream the way you and I are and, and actually go and make it. That's very encouraging. In 2018, you established the Habitats Trust. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Habitats Trust and what it does? The Habitats Trust, which is the newest foundation in our group, it was only founded uh, three years ago. The conservation and preservation of just natural habitats and its indigenous species. And uh, you know, one of the things that we're doing there is we still haven't started on the ground efforts. And the only reason we haven't done that is because there's such phenomenal organizations in India already doing amazing work. And I think that because India is a country of many issues, you know, uh, livelihood, education, health, that sometimes I think that the funding and the support that organizations such as these and yours should be getting are way down the pecking order. You know, and uh, so how do you even uh, allow for access to capital so that these organizations can continue doing the good work? I think the THT at the moment plays the role of the facilitator. And I think that's also a very important role to play. Um, and, uh, you know, over, over the next couple of years, we will establish a few on the ground efforts. But like I said, they're phenomenal organizations in the country doing phenomenal work. And, um, you know, they need support. And if the THT can be there to help them through our vision, which is, uh, you know, conservation and preservation of natural habitats and indigenous species, if we can do it through someone else, it's, it's a bit like, you know, uh, if you can get Roger Federer to play tennis for you, why would you play it yourself? You know, so, um, yeah, so if all the wildlife foundations are Roger Federer's, I am gladly happy for them to play for me. Roshni, you're actively involved in a huge range of projects, including education, women empowerment, wildlife conservation, and animal welfare. Can you briefly mention some of the initiatives that are close to your heart and what encouraged you to take up these causes? Of course, the Vidya Gyan Leadership Academies is very close to my heart because uh, I've been very closely associated with it and grown it over the last 10 years. And also, you know, it's access and a challenge for children from very different backgrounds. And um, so that's been a tremendous experience. More recently, I think the THT has been a tremendous experience, the Habitats Trust. These two are what I'm particularly enjoying you know, in the past couple of years. Under the Habitats Trust, you had also launched a TV series called On the Brink. And we hear there's even a season two wearing soon. Can you tell us a little bit more about the show and where we could watch this? 
So the On the Brink was actually conceptualized by us and uh, a team of young filmmakers called the Gaia people. And uh, each episode is 30 minutes. And each episode focuses on one species in India, which is On the Brink. And, uh, you know, season one rolled out last year uh, on uh, Discovery and Animal Planet. And we actually are now doing a release every week on the THT, the Habitat Trust website, so that people can go and watch because they're home. And, and um, season two is under production. And we're just trying to see because of the virtual wo world, you know, there are a lot more options to release it than there were previously, you know. And um, it had species like the fishing cat. It had species like the red panda. It, of course, also had a tiger, but it also had the king cobra. It also had the purple frog, you know. And, uh, and in the newer seasons, you know, we've included pangolin, the snow leopard, and uh, included a few of the smaller species, the lesser known species. And the whole idea is to really showcase that, uh, you know, how diverse India is and how threatened these species are. Thank you for sharing that, Roshni. That's so inspiring and encouraging. Roshni, as you know, the theme of this talk show is to share good news, smiles, and cheer. So I'm going to segue us to the next segment of the talk show, and we call it The Elephant in the Room, where we have a round of rapid-fire questions, and you have to answer them as quickly as possible. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Let's start. What is your spirit animal? When you say that, what comes to my mind is my dogs. And my dogs look so goofy. So I'm going to upgrade it and say wolf. What or who inspires and motivates you to do what you do? Uh, my immediate family. So my parents, my husband, my kids. All of them inspire me and stress me out every day. Is there a favorite project that you support that's close to your heart? The Habitats Trust and Vidya Gyan. So I'll have to say both. Your top three favorite animals? It could be wild animals, birds or reptiles. The animal will have to be elephant. I have actually never seen a pangolin in my life, but I've become so fascinated by them that they kind of become my favorite. And the birds of prey, owls and uh, kites, I think they're just phenomenal. What do you think humans should take away as a lesson from this pandemic and lockdown? When we started chatting in the beginning, it's true reflection of wants versus needs. I think that's something that they really, you know, uh, everybody needs to reflect on. You know, uh, what do I need? And then what is it that I want? And can you just sift the two out? Because I think that will just generally reduce the pressure on everything. They're not just on nature and on wildlife, but even on humans. I think there's, there's a lot of pressure. So just ease the pressure. And uh, so that would be one thing. And the second thing would just be, you know, as we've seen what's happened in even our own city of Delhi. I think, um, you know, uh, just allow nature to be. We're not even asking humans to heal. Just let it be. To heal itself. That's great. And you know, you'll be, you'll be pleased to know that during this lockdown, we've had so many calls of animals that have been, you know, found in temples and in schools. We had a civet that was in a school and we've had leopards coming into Greater Noida and places like that. So yeah, our team has been kind of working round the clock despite this lockdown, wearing masks, maintaining social distancing going out there and, and rescuing these animals and putting them back. Okay, and the last one, if it were up to you, what would be the first action you would take to turn the tide in the fight towards climate change? Stop the wildlife trade, the meat trade. I think, uh, you know, it's very difficult to say, I wish the whole world was vegetarian, because if that was the case, then there'd be those many more agricultural farms and then nature is again under pressure. So I don't know what the correct balance is, but I think uh, a lot less meat, meat trade. I think bring Absolutely. that down. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, Absolutely. you would know better what kind of an impact that would have, but I think it would. Oh, yes. Do you have a message for our viewers? I think there are lots of problems in the world. And, uh, but I think that if you want to be generous, not with uh, funds, but even with time, um, you know, give, uh, give nature a chance. And I think it'll, it'll make you feel better. It really will. You'll certainly be, breathe better, for sure. Roshni, that was so great. Thank you so much for joining us. It was such a delight to have you on the wild side. Thank you. I hope to see you soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good to see you, Karthik. Take care and stay safe. Bye. Bye-bye.
Well, that's our show for today. But before we go, I'd like to tell all of you that the COVID pandemic has driven people off the streets. However, calls involving wild animals across cities in India have increased tremendously. And Wildlife SOS continues to operate a hotline in the midst of a nationwide lockdown. If you'd like to help animals in distress and support the efforts of our rescue and animal care team, all you need to do is go to wildlifesos.org slash donate and donate whatever it is that you can. Remember that every little bit counts and makes a huge difference. Well, thank you and see you soon. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.